Hey everyone, just a short video. Uh, it's basically a response video to help some of you who've had this common question that I've been getting the past couple few weeks as to how did I install a 240 volt system into my garage in support of 240 volt electric brewing. So if you've had that question and are curious as to what I did in my garage to make this work, stick around and I'll show you what I did. Okay, first off, just to get it out in the open, I am not a licensed electrician, right? I done some wiring in my house. I've done things like this in the past, but uh, I've never personally installed a 240 volt breaker in my own house before. So I recruited the help of a good friend of mine who does this kind of stuff for a living to come over and give me a hand. And so therefore I was a lot, I felt a lot better about this, but after having walked through it and seen the process, actually I could have just done this myself. Uh, it actually was pretty straightforward, but I was a little nervous and worried about all the, um, the hype, not hype, but um, the actual real threat of uh, injury, shock and death that is always given when you work with breaker panels, especially with 240 volt, 30 amp wiring like I was doing. So um, I recruited a buddy who knows what he's talking about in case, just in case, right? So on to the details. So over my shoulder here behind this little sign is my circuit breaker. And I knew I wanted to have my outlet near the breaker just to minimize the amount of drywall work that I had to do to run conduit. Plus, I'm in my garage. I brew right in front of me here. It just seemed convenient to have the to have for me to have the uh, outlet right by or on this wall here right behind me. And, co and just coincidentally, it was next to the breaker and it all worked out great. Actually, my run was only about a foot. So um, as far as the work required, to patch it all up, it really, it really wasn't that bad. Your experience may be a lot different depending on where you have to route your conduit. But for me, the location I wanted worked out great. So what I ended up doing then, uh, once I identified where I wanted my outlet, I actually took off the breaker uh, panel to see uh, if I had any open slots. And I had two left, which was perfect because that's what you need. You need two side-by-side -side slots in your open slots in your breaker panel to install a 240 volt circuit breaker. And I had those, so that was no problem. Now, you can't just go out and buy any breaker. Um, I actually wasn't even aware of this because I how often does somebody buy a breaker, right? Um, so anyway, you need to find out what brand and make or make and brand or model, whatever, of breaker panel you have because there is no pro, um, standardized breaker size or type, right? Every manufacturer has got their own proprietary breakers. So you gotta take a look closely at the panel and look to see what yours was. I think mine was a Square D um, brand, but uh, they have two different types of breakers. So you have to look really carefully and pick the right one on the panel, uh, all right? So then I, once I found that, now you can go out and get your breaker. But uh, since you need, you really do need a GFCI rated breaker, uh, most hardware stores, at least the ones I've been to, don't have those in stock. You actually have to go go online and get them, or 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 a, or a electric supply warehouse somewhere, right? But I ordered mine on Amazon. Cost a lot more than an average 240 volt breaker. I bought a, a 240 volt 30 amp GFCI rated breaker for over a hundred bucks when you can get a non GFCI GFCI one for under ten. Uh, don't don't go cheap on this one because uh, your life is at stake. Uh, dying over brewing beer is not worth it, right? So I had my breaker ordered. Uh, I knew how far I wanted to go. So I went to the hardware store and bought the conduit I need, uh, the junction box, and the wires. Now, for a 30 amp circuit, you uh, in the U.S. here and probably anywhere, I imagine, um, not sure what uh, gauge that you use outside the U.S., but here in the U.S., uh, for a 30 amp breaker, you need a 10 gauge minimum wire. So um, it goes down. So, so like 12 gauge is smaller than 10 gauge, eight gauge is larger than 10 gauge, right? So 10 gauge is what you need at the minimum. If you're putting a 50 amp breaker in, you're going to need eight gauge or larger. Okay. And then on the day of install, you got to uh, remove your panel, uh, take out the drywall around where you're going to put it in. Now, before you touch anything in your panel, make sure your power is off to the main panel. Make sure there's no power coming in there because you can get a really good jolt by touching the wrong things with all the, with all those live wires and, and metal in there, right? So just, just, just be warned. And with the power off, it was really easy to run my conduit, attach everything to the wall, route it however I wanted, fish the wires up through, and um, attach them to both the um, 
breaker, the white wire and the green wire, the green being ground and the white being the GFCI um, ground, those go to the neutral bar on there. And when the wires run through the conduit down to the receptacle, you wire that up per the details for that receptacle. The red, black, white, and green wires go into specific holes in there to match the type of receptacle that you're installing. Now this receptacle I'm installing or have installed is a NEMA 1430R. R means receptacle. It's but NEMA 1430, it's a four wire dryer plug outlet. Not the three wire, you don't want the three wire. The three wire is an old standard go, going back decades or, or, or longer, right? That's, that, that's basically for 240 volt uh, power only. With electric brewing today, uh, the, all these systems are largely hybrid systems. You, you get the 240 volt for the heating element, but the 120 for the um, control panel and all the um, electronics in there, right? So. And that's what this allows you. This, this whole four, four plug system allows you both 240 and 120 in the same bundle. So just keep that in mind. There's also a round version of the NEMA 1430, which is I think the L14-30. Uh, that's just the same arrangement, but it's in a round uh, arrangement. But that's not what I have here. The, the only brew system I have now currently that's electric, uh, that's 240 volt, is the Spike Brewing uh, E-Brew in the Bag system. So that, that, that by default required that same standard. So that's why I installed here. Uh, if you have a different uh, type of home brewing um, plug, of course, you'll have to make adjustments for that too. But I'm just showing you what I did. So once it was all wired up and ready to go, I was, we turned on the power. We're able to uh, test the breaker by pushing the button on the breaker, make sure it trips and reset it. Uh, we were able to uh, measure the voltage to the outlets, uh, make sure uh, from one to the other was 240 and from another one to the ground was 120. Once I was happy that the wiring was all good, I went ahead and put the drywall back, back on, which is really the hardest part. Going out, getting some drywall, cutting it to size, uh, installing it in between the joists where you cut everything out, uh, taping, mudding, sanding, painting, right? I mean, that's the most time consuming part of this whole project. And when it was all said and done, I had a nice shiny outlet there. Um, I even went and, and uh, fixed the other outlet nearby so they match. I, I know, I'm not, <laughs> I couldn't stand a nice looking outlet and an ugly looking outlet. So I just redid that whole, that whole area there, but that was just something I did. And now I have a 240 volt, 30 amp uh, outlet that I can use for, not just for, for home brewing, but if I get in the, in the electric car. Uh, Tesla, anyone? <laughs> Tesla, uh, anyway, just kidding. And that's what I did. Real simple, guys. Um, I hope this helped you. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's plenty of other good videos out there. Mine is just sort of a, uh, a quick, quick video. Other people have done really good ones. Uh, I think one that comes to mind recently, because I know the guy, is Brian at Short Circuited Brewers. The, the, the name of his channel kind of gives it away. Short Circuited Brewers. That's uh, his niche is electric brewing. He's done a, at least a video on this topic there. So go check out his video. Uh, and then maybe I'll put a link down in the video description here to it for you as well. And there's a whole bunch of other ones out there too. So anyway, enough said. I'm wired up for brewing and I am probably going to do a lot of it this summer. And uh, man, I'm stoked. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all later.